From Malaga to Kela Honda on 88.9, this is Talk Radio Europe, your voice in Spain. Talk Radio Europe, your voice in Spain. Tonight with Richie Allen. Yes, welcome back to the programme, 952-799-224-902-44-4461. Those are your numbers, plus three, four, if you're calling from overseas. And the email address is studio at talkradioeurope.com. Good to have you with us this Thursday. Let's get on with it. We've got Gerald Salente waiting patiently on the phone to talk to us. It's great to have him back, it is. Tonight with Richie Allen. Well, he doesn't need much of an introduction from me. He publishes the Trends Journal. Um, he is um, a huge media um, personality in the United States of America. Uh, we're always grateful to have him on the programme. Without much ado, further ado, let's welcome back Gerald Salente. Gerald, welcome back. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine, Richie. Thanks for having me. Just got back from a trip from Ireland. And I have to tell you, I don't know what happened to those fighting Irish, boy. But, boy, they're the people that are really taking body blows from the politicians. You know, they're raping them in broad daylight, uh, increasing their, all of a sudden they're going to be having water meters put on that they never had before, increasing taxes, and the people are just taking it. I don't understand what's happened to the, to the fight in, in so many of the different countries. Just like here in the USA, people have lost their fighting spirit. There's an article in the Guardian newspaper today asking that very question, Gerald. Why have we not seen people taken to the streets in the United Kingdom, in the Republic of Ireland, and in the US, as we have seen people taken to the streets in Spain, in Portugal, in Greece, and all across the Middle East? What's wrong with the rest of us? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, you have to look. You know, there's this wonderful saying, this Hindu saying, you know, when the people are ready, the teacher appears. And the people aren't ready. They're not in shape physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And you know my saying, you know, as a former Bronx guy growing up in the Bronx, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. So the people in Spain know they've gone through enough already. They, they, have, they, they don't believe in the illusion of going to the ballot box, just like in Greece, because the ballot box only has a jack-in-the-box in it. It's one of the clowns from one of the major parties. And any adult that doesn't believe that anymore deserves what they get. So you saw what happened over in the Middle East and North Africa. It's because they had dictators and autocrats and monarchs, etc. So the people know that they have to overthrow the government. The people in the West still live under the illusion of democracy. There's no democracy. It's, one of, it's the political mafia in charge, run by, of course, the IMF, the International Mafia Federation. That's the big boss, the Don. And so the, the people are realizing in Spain and Greece that the only way to fight is to fight for your life. And that's what this is really about. It's a fight for your life. It, this, isn't, this isn't esoteric BS. It's you don't have money to live. That's Things right. are bad already. We're going to take more from you. You said something in the journal that really struck a chord with me, and it's a question I've been asking myself. I haven't really mentioned it on the programme here. You said, and you're right, in fact, I believe you're right anyway, listeners might disagree, despite the, dra the dramatic escalation of violence and destruction, there's evidently not enough blood flowing or bombs falling for the world at large to realise that these are not isolated incidents. And I've got to say, um, you've been so uncannily accurate in the more than 20 years that you've been publishing the, the journal. You said this in spring last year, that this was going to become bigger and bigger and bigger, and that it, was, it would be a global conflict. You've described it as the Great War. You're absolutely right, Gerald. I know. We, we know it. And, and, of course, we're not saying that in a bragging way. We're saying that to alert the people that the only way this is going to stop, and there's a way to stop this, take a page from Iceland. I guess those Vikings are still the toughest people on Earth because they're not taking the baloney, the guff that the banks are handing out to them. They didn't pay the bankers a penny. Who made up this stuff? Hey, we're the bankers. We can't lose no money. You got to give it to us. Yeah. You get it? So the, so the, I, the people in I, I, Iceland 
They voted. They voted. The people voted. The people have to vote. The people just voted in Italy in a referendum. They don't want nuclear power. They don't want their water supplies privatized. That's white shoe boy language for taking expensive public resources and selling them to your friends cheaply. And by the way, that's what they did in Egypt with the IMF. You know, the IMF, they, they're accusing this guy, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, the former head, of raping this woman. Whether or not he raped her, you know, I don't know. You'll find that out in the trial. But everyone should know, whether it's raping a woman or raping a nation, that's what the IMF does. Gabish, it's the International Mafia Federation. They're SOBs. The only reason they get away with it is because the media is part of it. These guys get dressed up to look respectable. They're nothing more than money junkies and murderers. They're raping every country on earth to get the money, and that's what they did in Egypt. They, they sold off the valuable public resources in the 90s when the nation was having problems, and they sold it to their buddies. That's all it is. These are deals. Listen. You know, I, gotta, I have to tell you, you know why I'm angry? I'm angry because, number one, the, that we're going to war and no one's stopping it. And number two, that if these were Italians, I'd be hearing it until the day I die. But you can't call, you know, the, the Credit Suisse swindlers or, the, or the, uh, the Deutsche Bank bandits or the Goldman Sachs gangs crooks and criminals. No, no, they're financiers, Mr. Salenti. What's the matter with you? They went to Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and Oxford. Which, which evidently entitles them to a life of, as you said, they're raping and pillaging public resources, people's money. Do you know what's really sickening about all of this? We've been urging our listeners to watch a, a documentary which won the Oscar called Inside Job. I know you've seen it. Yep. It lays it out exactly minute by minute what went on over the last number of years and how we ended up the way we are today. And what's even more sickening about that is that documentary gets, never gets a mention on any of the cable news networks in Britain, in Spain, in Ireland, because when that goes across a news editor's desk, oh, look at this, here's the absolute proof of what happened and what went on. Oh, we better not say that because the people who own this radio station or the people who own this um, TV station, those are the people being criticised in that documentary, so we better shut the hell up. Exactly. So, the, so anyway, the only way out of this is let the people vote. Let the people vote. We don't have democracies. Let, let's, go to the, let's go to the Swiss formula, direct democracy. On every major issue, let the people vote. The politicians only represent the people that give them campaign contributions. Once yes. again, white shoe boy lingo for bribes and payoffs. You know, what am I, six years old? You know, the, the bigger the, the, the envelope, the more money in it, the bigger the favor they do. For the average person, you could, you could drop dead on the street. They'll step on you, not to get your, their feet wet if you fell in a puddle. Why, don't, why have we not seen massive civil disobedience in terms of people, everybody... Because the people have, the people have lost their self-respect. Look what the people look like. Look what they dress like slobs. They come back to the States, I'm shocked. And, and, he, and, and, how, and how grossly you know, overweight we've become and sedentary. What happened to self-respect and dignity? It's lost. People look up to politicians. They clap like little children. They clap like little children. How could any self-respecting adult look up to a politician? And they do, so I don't know. I guess they'd be, you know, I guess, I guess in speaking with you, Richie, I've come up with a reason why. Because they've been so wonderfully indoctrinated in the BS that they call an education system. They cut them off when you're young. They neuter you. They teach you to obey orders, follow orders, and believe what you're being taught. So I guess the education system yeah. is doing a wonderful job. And never, never to question authority at all. That's exactly right. Look, you remember years ago on, on local councils, uh, in City Hall in New York and in City Hall in Waterford in the Republic of Ireland where I come from, the person running the sanitation department, the person running this department and that department, they weren't paid much more money than 
if, if that, they probably weren't paid as much money as people working in the private sector. And they, they worked hard at their jobs and they kept the city going and they were damned if they were ever found to be taking bribes or, or to be doing anything wrong. We've lost that now. We've made rock stars out of our politicians, haven't we? Celebrities out of people in Congress and, and people in Parliament in Britain and in Spain. They shouldn't be celebrities. It's crazy. I know. They should, actually, they should be looked upon as criminals. That's what they are, most of them. They're on the take. They're on the dole. You know, President Eisenhower, to, to me, was one of the, the better presidents in the United States. Five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied Forces, uh, 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 two-term uh, president. And he said that anyone that seeks the office, that really goes to seek the office, they don't deserve it because there's something basically wrong with them. And I agree with him. Anybody that seeks the office, you know, he didn't seek it. He was asked to go into it. Uh, they should not. Um, they should not uh, uh, be uh, looked upon as anything other than a bunch of, I guess, Anthony Weiners that we have in the United States. Clowns, These are yeah. sociopaths. Absolute clowns. What have you made of um, all this talk about the disintegration of NATO? You must have um, you must have watched well, that with NATO, NATO there is no business for NATO. What do we need NATO for? NATO was put in place during the Cold War in in, in, in the in the uh, belief of stopping a Soviet invasion into the West. Now obviously the the Russians aren't our enemies anymore. There's no more Soviet Union. What do we need NATO? Oh, you know why you need NATO? So the United States could keep fighting wars and other and other psychopaths like that little chick, that little weenie you got over there, uh, Cameron. These guys have never fought a day in his life. He's probably never been in a schoolyard fight, let alone a bar fight. Or that little Sarko the American over there, Sarkozy in France. All these little guys that never fight that get uh, to send other people to war. That's why they need NATO, because so they could get their psychotic kicks off. Anybody that wants to go fight, I've said this over and over again, pack your gear up and, and, and go lead the charge. Right, Get out of the White House and onto the White Horse. Proper order. And if you want to send people to war, send your own children over there. Yeah, you and you lead the much, charge. Yeah. And you lead, send your wife as well. They've got to clean up the, the, you know, the, 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 the wounded soldiers. There's a lot of work to be done that they're farming out to uh, military contractors. There's a job for you in the, on the war front. Or else shut your mouth. I couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're going to engage young men and women, uh, first of all, any country in the world should never send their young men and women to war unless they are directly um, under threat themselves. If, they, if, if their own borders are under threat, never send them in harm's way unless it really means something. And if you're going to send them to do it, as you quite rightly said, Gerald, strap a gun over your shoulder and get on that bloody plane and go and do it yourself. That's right. You, go, you call yourself a commander-in-chief? Go command, chief. That's absolutely right. Listen, we've got a call coming in, Gerald. Stand by. Caller, you're live. Good evening. I just want to say amen. 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 Thanks, John. OK, I'm off. Thanks. Good to hear from you. Gerald, what about what, where this is all going to end up? Um, it looks on the surface of things that the United States has, has left Britain and France take the lead, especially with regards to Libya. We're seeing what's going on in Syria now, the Sudan. Um, we, we can say Greece. Where do you see things in 12 months from now? What's going We're to be going, going on? to war with the first great war of the 21st century has begun. You know, they teach us little children... You know, World War I began when the Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated at Sarajevo. No, it didn't. And that's what we're seeing now. We're going to see, we're going to, and it's, this is going to be world, it's going to be, it's going to be very different. You know how they say generals fight the last war? Yes. And of course they are again. And that's the other thing. I'm sick and tired of, you know, we have to salute our men and women in uniform. I salute this. I salute them for what? For going into foreign countries and invading them? that we have no business being in. So when I say that, you know, where we're going and what's happening, you can see the wars unfolding in front of us. They're leading us into a world war, but these will be weapons of mass destruction wars. How about a nice dirty bomb in Paris after bombing Gaddafi's 
quote, compound. You never hear the language they use. These guys never live in houses. They only live in compounds. Compounds, yeah. You know? And, and, and I, I love Osama bin Laden's con- command and control center. It looked like he was a homeless guy, a derelict, with this little TV screen, you know? Yeah. And from but, there, of course, he so, was conducting wars against the West. Yeah. Of course you know, he was. So, so anyway, we're going to see we're going to see reprisal attacks, dirty bombs, suitcase-sized nuclear weapons. The people will be in constant fear because that's what they want you to do. They want to keep you in fear. You know who said it best? Go it was on. Herman Goering just before yeah, he was yeah, yeah. heading to the gallows. He said it. He said it best. He said it, 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 it's 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 the leaders of the countries who determine the policy, and it's always a simple matter to drag the people along. Whether it's a democracy, fascist dictator, parliament, communist, voice or no voice, the people can always be brought can be to the in. bidding of the leaders. Sarah, stand by. Call your life. Good evening. Oh, good evening. It just, this man is saying so much, it just makes you want to weep. Do, Why? You, do you agree with him? You know, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, oh, I, don't, I can't tell you. It's, it has to be said so many times, and why aren't we standing up? Why aren't we marching in the streets? Why haven't we got our placards out every time something like this happens? Isn't that Why the tragedy? So who, who are we speaking to, by the way? Mary, isn't it the tragedy that in the last couple of weeks I've had people like Mike, uh, Max Kaiser, uh, Michael Rivero, people of the stature of Gerald Salente saying this sort of thing. And, yeah, I, 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 I worry that we listen to, the, to Gerald Salente, for example, and we think, oh, he's very entertaining, he, he's got some very good points, and then we go away and do nothing about what he's had to yeah, say. Yeah, it's, it's shocking. We need bombs put underneath us. Oh, it's frustrating and... I tell you, when I hear him speak, this man, it just, it, it, it's depressing and uplifting at the same time. Mary, thanks for your call. Good to hear from you. Okay. Thanks. Well, there you have Actually, it, Gerald. The, the, thank you, uh, Mary. The, the, the next issue of the Trends Journal uh, that's coming out in two weeks, the, the headline is going to be Fight. Fight as though your life depends on it, because it really does. And whether they're taxing you, the strain it takes on your life, the money that you can't spend to pay your bills, the the, the taxing from the wars. Your your life is obviously on the line. We know that for wars. But people don't realize how many other ways their life is on the line, and it's a matter of life and death. Gerald, hang on for one second. We'll get into that in one second. I just want to get as many callers in as we can. Caller, you're live. Good evening. Hello, good evening, Richard. Sharon. Hi, Uh, Sharon. Question for your interviewee. Um, So, therefore, as individuals, what do we do? Not pay taxes, talk to people. I'm trying to talk to people, but I'm finding it difficult to, to, to know how to plan it. Um, what, what can we as individuals do? Thanks, Sharon. Well, one Good of stuff. the things that I, I believe we should begin with is, is try to find the best legal and, and Internet minds and yeah. start campaigns beginning with your town on let the people vote. We're, we don't have representative form of governments. What, That's what, one step. What do you mean, vote, vote on the internet? Vote, how do you mean by let the people vote? In other words, when there's an issue, whether it's in your locality... Oh, a lo- about- yeah, an individual, yeah, vote on issues, but that's only if these silly people allow us to vote on issues, isn't it? Yeah, let us vote on the issues. Right, thank you. I'll hang up and, and listen. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Go ahead, Gerald, yeah. Yeah, and that's the, that's the only change. Let us be responsible. These people aren't smarter than we are. Think for yourself. Let us make up our own minds. So now in this Internet age, we see the power of it. We saw it with the power of Facebook and the social networkings that happened, before, that happened to bring about these revolutions that are springing up. And by the way, I wrote about this in my book, Trends 2000, in 1997. It was a Warner book. I called it techno-tribalism. This was before social networking was ever even a thought. I've seen, your, way- I've seen your interview with Oprah Winfrey, and I remember her asking you about that. Um, and you were explaining that in detail. That's absolutely right. You were on the ball then, Gerald. There's no doubt about so, that. So this is the way out. And, and, and yes, keep speaking out. And when you see a politician, confront them. When you, pick, when you don't like something you read in the newspaper, 
pick it up and call them and demand to speak to the person who wrote it. This stupid language they keep using. Militants in Iraq killed eight today. What militants? Yeah. How about freedom fighters that want to throw out the occupiers and the quizzling stooges that are supporting yeah. them? We, we could describe them as people that are a little bit pissed that their whole country has been levelled to the ground in the last eight or nine years. Caller, you're live. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> who, are we, who are we speaking I'm, to? I'm really, really interested in what's uh, being said. But I, uh, however, I do believe um, people have been anaesthetised over a long period of time uh, by the television, by the media, by everybody pumping at them. Uh, you switch on your television tonight and you'll see... Uh, Prince Harry is just volunteered to go back yeah. to Afghanistan. Uh, there's Afghanistan blowing itself, well, not blowing itself up, we are. And um, then you've got the, 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 the whole of Africa. And, uh, I, I mean, they're talking about Libya. Why not talk about Mugabe in, in, in uh, what used to be Rhodesia? Yes. The, everything. We are being totally anaesthetized. But... Where's the good news? Well, the good news is that the good news is there's 20 percent of the people that aren't being anesthetized, and that's what we say: the 20 percent solution. It's that you don't follow the masses; the masses follow. No, so why go do. down that road? And what I'm saying is that there's a way out of this if the people of courage and character speak up and step out. I fight for my rights. I don't take any. I don't tell anybody what to believe. I don't want anybody I telling me what to believe. 100%. Brilliant caller, thank you very much for your call. Gerald, I know you do a thousand of these a day. Um, have you got another five or six minutes? Can we take a short break or have you got to go to another interview? I, I, I have five or six minutes only. Five or six minutes only. Stay where you are, Gerald. Uh, okay. We'll take a very quick break so that I don't get into trouble with our sponsors. The Unmissable Over 50 Show. The lifestyle event for the Coast Seniors is back for an incredible fifth year. All the usual attractions, plus some new ones. Health advice, gardening clinics, finance advice, art, golf lessons, music, computers, home security, fashions, and much more. Promote your product or service at this hugely successful event. For details, call 902-003-896. That's 902-003-896. Or email info at slp.ie. The Over 50 Show, Palacio de Congresos Estepona, Saturday the 26th and Sunday the 27th of November, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Free admission and parking. Be at it, be part of it. The camera. Now, every week, Yelmo Cinemas in Plaza Mayor are showing the very best and latest movie releases in English. To check what's on an original version, go online to yelmocines.es. And don't forget to ask for your movie Yelmo card, which entitles you to enjoy Spectator's Day and collect points to be cashed in for entrance tickets and popcorn. Further information at the box office. Yelmo Cinemas, Plaza Mayor, Malaga. Talk Radio Europe, Richie Allen. Tonight. Welcome back. The excellent Gerald Salente has uh, stayed with us for a bit. Thanks, Gerald. Just a couple of quick comments. The um, Peter says, Peter Lawrence, hi, Peter. Uh, good to have you back. I agree with almost everything Gerald is saying, uh, but I am surprised that he is amazed at the ineptitude of politicians as the only qualification required is uh, no qualifi qualification at all. That's firmly uh, tongue-in-cheek, Gerald. Caller, you are live, and you've got to be really quick because we've not got much time. Go okay, on. just really quickly, Gerald, there are hundreds of thousands of Spanish people about to go back on the streets on the 19th of this month. Anyone who's down in the mouth about people not reacting should get out there and join them. Brilliant okay, stuff, Bertha, thank you. Yeah, that's, and stay there. Don't take their baloney. Who are the... You know, the police are nothing more than, than enforcers for government crime bosses. What happened to their morality? beating the people to support the criminals. They should be ashamed of themselves. Shouldn't they just, when you think about it? I mean, I, I was thinking when I saw those scenes in Greece, and when I saw some of the scenes recently in England. Now, thankfully, there's been a bit of judicial common sense in England because they've, they've, they've banned this kettling thing, Gerald, where the protesters are kettled right. into an area by the police. So there is some common sense. But we've... I would have said we're losing it, but it would appear we've lost the right to assemble. 
Now, I know in the United States... They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're afraid. They see it coming down around them. These are sociopaths and psychopaths. That's the nature of a politician. Do you ever hear them admit that they're wrong or they can't fix the screw-up that they made that they won't admit to? They don't want to lose power. They're power freaks and they're, and they're money junkies. So they're going to do everything they can to stop the people from fighting. And again, the only way out is let the people vote. They don't, the politicians in Greece, in, in Ireland, in Portugal, in Spain, in Italy, on every major issue, the UK, let the people vote. And then you don't have to go fight out in the streets. Gerald, listen to this very briefly. This is from Martin. Martin uh, is, is beginning uh, to listen in in the Republic of Ireland. He sends us emails. He says, really interested in what Gerald is saying. Since the budget came into effect at the start of 2011, Martin is a young man, he's in his mid-twenties. I pay 50% of everything I earn in tax. 50 cents I take home for every... 50 cents out of every euro he earns. I now pay 150 a litre of diesel to get to work. I used to pay 110 at Christmas. I'm facing a car insurance renewal of 600 euro. It was only 395 euro last year. I've not had an accident due to insurance and taxes and levies. None of my insurance details changed, as he says. Same car, same driver. No penalty points. We got a letter today to inform us that our natural gas will hike by 10% in September, just in time for winter. We are witnessing engineers walking the streets in stoning metres for water, which is a necessity and a charge to follow in 2012. As you said, Gerald, we believe, in, we believe a household charge is on the way also in January 2012. What this is for exactly, Martin says, I don't know. And he is absolutely fuming and he's listening in the Republic of Ireland. Can you believe that? Well, again, yes, I told you, I just came back from Ireland and I was very, very... I was very sad not to see the fighting Irish and how most of them are just bending over and applauding that Obama was there and the Queen went to visit and how wonderful they felt. Oh, yeah, that'll get you far. And, and when you look at the Irish, it's the same thing, from the clown Cowan to the sellout Kenny. I mean, who could believe this stuff? Nice. You're voting for one of the mafia. You don't have anybody there representing you. Take to the streets. Don't pay. As I said, I, I was shocked. What I saw there, and by the way, I have to say, you know, I, I've had better presentations. I was in a, you know, it, it, the people still didn't like what I had to say in Ireland. I upset a number of them at a talk that I gave. They didn't want to hear it. Because we're predisposed to not want to hear what we need to hear. It's as simple as that, isn't it? It is. And, and again, and I said, just change, you know, you got that R and, and take that from Iceland and change it. It, it. What Ireland did, it's very simple. Let the people vote. Don't let them sell your country out. Give their precious natural resources and other resources away to the IMF mafia because that's what they're doing and you're going to pay with your life and that's what people have to understand and that's why this trends journal coming out it's about fight you better fight Gerald, thanks very much for taking the time out as always. I know you've got loads more of these to do today. Um, we'll get back in touch in about three weeks when the, um, when the summer comes out, the next uh, journal, and we'll talk again. And sincere thanks for staying on a bit later. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. And good luck to all you folks out there. Keep it up. Keep it going. Keep the pressure on. Thanks, Gerald. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye-bye.